As you might or mightn't know, my goal for this year was to not hurt anyone in a video game. That was actually a pretty difficult endeavor, especially when I started playing Stardew multiplayer and couldn't decide if when I destroyed these weeds, because they disappeared out of existence, the action was causing permanent damage to the world and subsequently my psyche, but it didn't necessarily start out that severe. Here are the games in no particular order that I played during this, my very peaceful year. The first game I want to talk about is Fugle. This game I've had for a few years. It's got an interesting style. You kind of turn into birds that you fly past or you can pick whoever you want to be. There's places to explore but because you're a bird you don't really have any material gain from exploration. You also don't need to eat or drink, so ironically, the catharsis can often be so severe that you feel like there's no meaning to anything. It was easy not to kill anything in this game and I popped into it a few minutes at a time over the course of the year. Worlds Adrift. Uh, this game is very special. I didn't know what to expect, and it's really big and interesting and steampunk, and you create airships and fly around with this rope, and every time you swing around the bottom of an island, you're risking it all. I don't really know what else you want from it. There's dangerous animals, and I'm assuming these ships have big fiery battles, but I just kept building peaceful ships and falling off of them. Tilt Brush is just a party, really. I have 32 hours in it since release and I feel like I don't want to play too much more because VR still feels so remote in the gaming ecosystem and I don't want to further distance myself from the traditional gaming community. You just use a bunch of brushes that light up and can sync up with music and as you might expect I didn't have a problem not hurting anyone in this game. Stardew Valley. This year Stardew Valley came out with a multiplayer version that I really enjoyed. I did a couple live streams at my sister's farm where I debated the destruction of weeds like I said and she took care of the whole farm, which is fine, it's her farm. It's the same game as the single player except there's less pressure on any existentially disturbed farm hands. I didn't have to kill anything or hurt anyone and debated the destruction of weeds for a long time before the day I accidentally killed a few which opened up the door to harvesting weeds and honestly the jury's still out on that. You see, when you smash the the rocks scattered around the property, they go into your inventory. You're moving the idea of a rock and organizing it, but when you chop up the weeds, they just go away. And if you don't plant anything on the ground where you remove the weeds, then the destruction was just for destruction's sake. This is where I'm at in my life. Listen, two big things. I've been playing games for a while and I realized that your and my attentions are valuable, and that nowadays there's more games than time. That what games we choose to play end up being more popular, the company's more powerful, the staff more populated, the games that we don't play go away. You get all this. And I don't think we should cease violence in games. My my concern is the one-notedness of violence-only games, which refuse to offer a robust, psychologically fulfilling downtime experience. Why should you be forced to invest your time in a world which only offers one way to spend your mental energy? I want more from gaming, and I want the 33% of Americans who don't play games at all to be part of this conversation to make better games rather than just more games. You hear what I'm saying. Google Earth has a VR mode that's really cool. I did a live stream where I talked to people and flew around where they wanted to go. This 2D video doesn't really reflect my actual experience, which is much more immersive, but it's really fun to just explore the world from this perspective. I didn't. I don't think I killed anyone in this game. Spider-Man has a great big New York simulator that was fun to swing around in and unlock spider suits and abilities within just by playing. The experience was varied enough between swinging, saving the day, talking to people, and solving little problems all over the place. I just stopped everyone with webs so they'd stop fighting, removing their agency and satisfying the game's needs to advance the plot. And I sometimes needed a friend to advance the game during all the mandatory punching parts. But the most fun came from swinging around the city which you develop a proficiency for and what becomes the primary draw past the final boss fight. Red Dead Redemption 2, Big Cowboy World 2, I did the same thing I did in the original, I turned off all the user interface and wandered around exploring the world without any desire to do what I was told. I was surprised at the freedom this game had over its predecessor. The first chapter had a lot of mandatory missions, but you could skip them by failing three times, which I did for every violent mission, which was basically every one of them. I've seen people complain about the tediousness of cleaning guns, but I still don't know how to do that or am concerned. At some point I ran up and bought a train ticket, then ended up going broke in a completely different city. Uh oh. Something I didn't know was going to happen because like I said I had the user interface turned off. It was surreal that a few moments after I had just about given up and started running back to the starting point of the game's second chapter, some guys from the main story came to find me and bring me back voluntarily. There you are, Arthur. Hello, Bill. Well, Dutch has been worried about you. Sent me out looking. But not until after I'd seen the vaudeville show or peacefully talked to a suffragette. To want to vote, I say go for it. 
For GTA Online, Francisco and I jogged along this year. As you know, we bought a yacht and had a really cool party that was incredibly emotionally draining, but I think it will make me stronger for the next one. It's totally possible to play this game without fighting anyone, and if you sell enough tickets to a party, you can afford your own yacht. I've been spending my time learning about other game worlds, but I still like to log in and revel in my accomplishments, which is a good use of time sometimes and a reminder of how far we've come. Audio Shield is the OG VR music game. I don't think these projectiles have a nervous system, and technically when you hit them they explode into a multitude of smaller projectiles, which seems like a dream come true for a projectile. I used this game to do a little live concert of some of my original music, and it was great for that. I think it could use some new colors, but I can just do that for myself if need be. For No Man's Sky, say what you want, No Man's Sky has temporarily deflated the pains of excess hype in gaming, and I'm grateful. It at least came through on the promise of take off from one planet, point to another, and land there. I'm glad I can do that any day I want to, to feel that extra planetary freedom. I played City Skylines for like a half hour. I thought it'd be cool to build a little cozy city, but I realized it'd be up to my nose and nuanced city building rules. Figured I'd get back into this when I was inspired to sit down and figure out how to distribute power to my ultra cozy town, which I actually did last night and I've already become great at balancing out my little Huga town. No one died as far as I know, but I did replace a house that had a heavy crime rate with the police station, so I might be more responsible for everyone's safety than I feel comfortable with. Star Trek Bridge Crew, I played this with my friends and it was a great time. This was kind of early in the year, so when I was the captain and I accidentally ordered a torpedo to be fired, but it didn't destroy the enemy ship. Destroyed. Is it gone? Yeah, the Huxley must have got it. You can take a few different jobs on the ship's bridge, and there's a VR mode too. And it was fun to warp around space with my friends, especially when I was the warping guy. Whoa. And you don't have to kill anyone when you're the navigator. Firewatch, this one was the most story-oriented game. I thought it'd be fun to livestream. It's a pretty cool game, but I didn't get attached to the characters, and because it's such a narrative-focused game, you don't escape having to be someone you might not want to be. I'm pulling for this guy, I just don't like being forced into dialogue choices that don't reflect who I want to be in any world. He seemed to have an aggressive tendency, but he hasn't hurt anyone so far. Everest VR, this made me uncomfortable, not so much the visual discomfort of being in a very perilous place, but because it was probably visually close enough to the actual Mount Everest that putting the flag on top wouldn't be too dissimilar from the real thing should I ever try to do it. So I didn't put the flag on, for the record, and I'd like to echo my concerns that VR games are going to get closer and closer to reality. Then there's Rec Room. This is the VR base experience I'm pulling for. A few companies seem to want to make themselves into the gateway for VR character development, a world where you customize an avatar and then play a lot of different game types. I, think, I don't, hope I don't have to kill you, Gold Vision. You know what? I have no plans on uh, killing anybody right now. Oh, yeah. I believe in world peace. I played the new Battle Royale mode and one without killing anyone. The other players defeated each other or were killed by the dead zone, and there's other stuff to do, but like I said, this game will probably just continue to evolve to chase whatever the market is demanding, like all the big guys are. It also offers 2D support, so you don't have to be in VR to enjoy the game's offerings. And I think it's free on Steam right now. Speaking of big guys, player knowns Battlegrounds, I did a guided meditation in a garage I found. I'm trying to let reality catch up with my mind. There's not a lot of room for creative expression, but it's a cool skydive simulator with a pretty serious vibe. And then there's Fortnite, the same thing but with building. This game has chops. It's more of a demonstration of a game engine and what the team at Epic Games can pivot into the marketplace. Even as I write this, they're releasing a creative only mode, which I haven't even gotten into yet. You can do a lot in Fortnite and there's tons of art built in, so say what you want. It's really, it's really rough getting killed too. It's very beautiful though, so you can enjoy your free time falling to the ground and appreciating the town one death at a time. Overwatch is still very solid and very professional, getting professionaler. I can't really compete to the benefit of my teammates by refusing to attack anyone, and the game gets more balanced every day, amplifying the importance of each player's contribution. I played as healers, which really just feels like being a firefighter, and that's kind of a fun job to sign up for every once in a while. And obviously it didn't hurt anybody. For risk of rain, my friends kept dying, and I wasn't going to burn my no-kill principles on these 10 pixel monsters. The difficulty scaled to the amount of players, so my friends were going to have to compensate for my lack of participation, and I just ran around trying to distract the monsters, but I ended up letting down my team. I think they're still suffering from some light apprehension, and overall it's a cool styled world. The size of your character might help keep your ego in check if you're looking for a celebrated roguelike.
There was Frog Detective, which, you know, this game is all right. Obviously, this is more of a demonstration of Grace's team's skills, and I hope they grow. I will say that the ending was worth the modest time investment, which is a rarity in a lot of games, especially those which take too much time. It was a good time, and I didn't have to kill anyone. This is a fun way to perceive reality. Planet Side 2. Still love Planet Side 2. I normally just fly around and look at the fights all over the place. I'd achieved a solid number of kills before this year, which I think is one of the reasons why I'm pursuing this peacefulness. I also feel no obligation to endlessly grind for experience at this point in time, which feels like a part of winter culture and makes me uncomfortable in every game nowadays. There's a holiday seasonal mode going on right now in a new game format called Planet Side Arena coming out early next year. Planet Side 2 is free still, and it seems like the game's pretty optimized for Fortnite-ready machines, unlike during its release when no one's PC could handle it. It did end up being attributed a kill, which was unfair. I was flying a Galaxy dropship to gather competitive data on an anomaly, for whatever that is to you, and an enemy aircraft crashed into the heavily damaged ship, which I'd already ejected from. That was just a reminder that war is unfair a lot of the time. I wasn't even in the aircraft, though, so I'm not going to count it. Super hot. Thankfully, before I gave up killing people, I made it this far in this game where you can jump into an enemy's body like this. I managed to win this battle by jumping bodies and letting the forces of violence cancel each other out. It took an hour to figure out the methodology, but it's totally possible. It's still a violent game, so the imagery can be negative to your psyche, but it's a chance to dance with the computer and play its game without ever firing around. Adventure Island, I don't know if you've ever seen this, and I was amazed at how much even these early educational games set you up to replay endlessly. I only played it for an hour or two to face this guy who always freaked me out. Guy, he's freaking me out! I didn't have to kill anyone, but regarding psyche damage, this guy I'm telling you. Sea of Thieves, this game is set up to get a bunch of random people together on a boat and figure out how to sail with each other, and it works well for that. When I played, I just explained to everyone that I wasn't going to hurt anyone, and they ran off and blew up skeletons without me. There's still treasure hunting missions, but you can really enjoy just sailing around with new people, or by yourself, like I did sometimes, so I wouldn't let anyone down when I joyfully sailed around to random places. Speaking of pirates, I recently came across this recipe and have been drinking this stuff. It's called hot buttered rum, and it's so rich I can only have one every couple of days. But if you're old enough to drink rum in your country, I'd say give it a try. It'll cut your alertness for speed combat games, but it'll help you enjoy them too. Anyway, these were the notable games I played this year in the shortest amount of time I could muster. I really try to appreciate your psyche here and your time. I've been working a lot and working on bigger ideas that take a bit more time than I'd prefer. I'm looking forward to next year, seeing what we can do as a big gaming community. And if you need me, I'll be out uh, looking for peace. My name is Gold Vision. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.